So I want to fit about three pumpkins on my paper. If I can fit too many of them, that means my pumpkins are too small. I want really big pumpkins because we will be drawing with glue later and I want practice. Now pumpkins are not perfect circles or ovals. They're very lumpy and bumpy. So don't worry about getting a perfect shape because pumpkins aren't perfect shapes. I'm starting in the very foreground and I have one pumpkin that's going to be really off the page. I want it to be looking like it's really close. So I'm only doing part of a oval. I'm going to put the stem. My stem, this one's going to be really big because it's the closest pumpkin. It might even go off the page too. I'm not going to worry about adding the ridges. I'm going to do the shapes first. So the next pumpkin, maybe this pumpkin's up a little bit higher so I can see the bottom. And sometimes if I have trouble making my shapes, it's easier to do a bunch of small lines instead of one big one. And I'm also turning my paper too. All right, so this one's still going off the page, but it looks like it's a little further back. Again, I'm doing little lines this time so I can control it a little bit better. Now I want at least one more and I'm gonna make it up higher on the page somehow. I'm only gonna have to draw this part of the line because these two pumpkins are in front. So I have to use my imagination and decide just how big I want this back pumpkin to be. Turn it if I need to. That's good. And this stem will be a little bit thinner. I'm not making anything too thin because again, we're going to be drawing with glue. We don't want any lines too close together. Now, if you need to, you can decide where you want your ground and your sky to be. My pumpkins completely cover it. So if I wanted, this whole upper area could be the sky and the bottom could be the grass. If you still want more grass and you want to put a horizon line in after your pumpkins are done, then you can add your line. Don't forget a moon as well. Now I need the curved ridges. I don't want these lines too close and I want to make sure they're curving with the shape of the pumpkin. I'm trying to create something that has form, something that looks three-dimensional. Right now everything looks very flat. To make it look more three-dimensional, I'm going to add those ridges. In the middle, just to help me, I'm going to draw a straight line down. Draw this line lighter. I'm pushing very hard so you can see the lines on my paper, but you should always push lighter when you're sketching. That way it's easier to erase if you need to. I have lines curving out and back in. I should probably be careful. Those are very small shapes. I don't want to make anything that's too small. So maybe I will just leave that one open and pretend that that ridge stops about here. The next one over, I'm going to curve even more. I really only need like two lines because, again, I want space in between each uh, ridge. And that's because I'm going to be coloring in between the lines. Same thing, I don't want to cut here and have a tiny shape, so I'm just going to stop right there. I have enough for one more nice line here, and that's it. Notice uh, one, two, three, four, five lines total. That's it. Now this one is in the foreground. It is extremely close. So my lines, as I curve them, aren't going to go all the way down to the bottom because the pumpkin is going to go off the page. I am still not making lines that are too close. Doing two lines for each side. Now this one, I don't really need to draw a line on this side at all because there's not really any space to do it. So I would just leave it like that. Over here, one more. 
line down the middle. Again, if you need to, don't draw it all at once. Do it in little spaces. And if you need to, flip your paper so it's easier to draw the curves. Once your plan is finished, you can go over to the supply area to pick up a big black paper and start drawing this twice as big. Don't forget to write your name on the back of your papers.